Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Vindicator Restoration Project, which shall also serve as its conclusion. In this video I will be going through the steps of the painting process in detail, in a way which I hope will be sufficiently clear and visually pleasing to my dear viewers. Be forewarned, however, that uh, I may or may not go on a couple of tangents during this video. Uh, timestamps will be in the description to skip these if for some reason you're not interested in the precise change of hues between colours during the 2012 switch of Games Workshop's paint supplier and other such things. Uh, in the background right now are some rotating shots of the undercoated Vindicator model, both with and without the dozer blade and the underkiller missile, just to get a closer look at the model itself without all the bits of paint still stuck to it, or the melted pieces of plastic that have a certain shine to them. Here, I, I hope that you can see that I've done a decent job I hope, of restoring the model to its former glory. Especially the cannon, you can see, I hope, is a lot less wonky than the actual cannon piece. Anyway, moving on to the painting process itself. So, to begin with, I base coated the hull of the Vindicator with Coat d'Arms Marine Blue. Now, Coat Dumps paints are manufactured by HMG Paints. Uh, they used to be the original suppliers for Games Workshop's Citadel Paints line, until a switch in the early 2000s to a French supplier, who then supplied essentially the same paints, with some notable exceptions, such as Dark Angels Green, which actually underwent a significant change in hue much to the chagrin of Dark Angels players at the time. Uh, but yes, they essentially kept manufacturing the same paints for Games Workshop, with some minor minor differences, but using the same solvent and the same types of pigment, as far as I'm able to tell, just based on consistency and smell. I still have some of either of those batches lying around. As it turns out, HMG still manufactures the old paints that they used to make for Games Workshop uh, under the Coat d'Arms name, uh, slightly renamed to avoid trademark issues, I presume. So Ultramarine's Blue is now Marine Blue. Now, when the switch to the current paint range occurred in 2012, uh, I was unable to stock up on Ultramarine's Blue. Uh, due to various factors, one of them being the fact that my local store was over an hour's drive away. Um, so yeah, I wasn't able to stock up during the transition period, which I believe was May or June of 2012, if my memory serves correctly. Uh, I kept on using my trusty pot of Ultramarines Blue until it ran out in mid-2015. Um, according to the colour conversion charts from 2012, the new paint to take its place was Altdorf Guard Blue, uh, not Calgar Blue, uh, which I initially thought it was without the chart, just based on, you know, name association. That cost me an extra trip to the store when I figured out that no, it's not Calgar Blue, and then consulted the chart. Um, anyway, trying out Altdorf for the first time I, I did have to come to the realisation that something wasn't quite right about its colour. The, quite clearly, it wasn't a one-to-one -one match with the old Ultramarines Blue. Now, I probably wouldn't have noticed this if I had started working on a, a new model, completely from scratch, but I was working on a model that I had already begun work on using Ultramarines Blue. So this stood out to me at the time. I do have a model that I can show this on right now, not the model in question, but uh, you can see that yeah, Altdorf is a bit more grey, essentially. It's not a big issue and it doesn't stand out if you've got two different models painted in the two colours, 
next to each other, but I mean it stands out on the same model. But anyway, that small tangent over, uh, I base coated the model in marine blue. I then followed this up with a recess shade of a 2 to 1 mixture of the contrast paints Leviodon Blue and Skeleton Horde. I then followed this up with a highlight of Calgar Blue around all the upper and side edges, but not the lower ones. And I then followed this up with a fine highlight of Lupin Grey, which is Coat Darm's version of Space Wolf's Grey, which I only actually recently ran out of due to the fact that I'd only ever used it for edge highlighting. The metal parts I base coated with lead belcher and at this stage I also used a 2 to 1 and a 1 to 1 mixture of the previous two contrast paints, Leviodon Blue and Skeleton Horde, uh, to add some streaks of varying colour around the rivets and also in areas where I, I thought that streaks would occur from rain damage, essentially. I then uh, highlighted the metal areas with Stormhost Silver, and I also started stippling on bolt gun metal and uh, following that up with Stormhost Silver again to create chipped paint and wear and tear around the edges of the hull where I deemed that it would be appropriate. For the lens in the sensor array on the top of the tank I used Avalanche Sunset highlighted by Ushapti Bone and then glazed with Flesh Terrors Red. I base coated the gold areas with uh, Retributor Armor. I then highlighted that with Liberator Gold and then washed it with Skeleton Horde. Um, the scroll work was base coated Bane Blade Brown followed by a highlight of Baylor Brown and then finally by a highlight of Ushapti Bone. I also at this stage used a 2 to 2 to 1 mixture of Skeleton Horde, Leviodon Blue and Contrast Medium to add more grime and dirt around the bottom of the tank. And also stippling on some pure skeleton hoard in some areas. Yes, I stippled a contrast paint. I undercoated the roll of cloth, uh, Mournfang Brown, and at this stage I also began applying the transferred with the transfers which I had selected for the model. Now, uh, I like to seal transfers with contrast medium instead of storm shield because I just feel storm shield is, uh, goes on a bit too thick in its application and also in, in, in my opinion just dulls down the sheen of the paint too much. Um, when I apply a transfer over a piece of damage such as the bullet hole and the Ultima symbol, I seal the transfer first with contrast medium in place and then I use a sharp hobby knife to tear away at the area which would reasonably need to be missing. I then uh, paint around the edges of, of the transfer using the original paint, uh, the marine blue and then I go back in with bolt gun metal and uh, the Stormhost Silver to touch up the bullet hole itself. I also just add little little dots and chips of, of marine blue and uh, bolt gun metal around the edges of transfers to make them look like they've been painted on and some of them has already worn off or chipped off. I then stippled Steel Legion Drab over the bottom edge of the tank as well, well, bottom edge of the hull as well as the tracks, and uh, I painted the straps holding the cloth in place using Night Lord's Blue and then I uh, picked out the buckles with 
Retributorama, and then I washed the whole thing with uh, Gilliman Flesh. Now, I tried to do the same me method of photography for the drivers, but uh, there is the downside of the turning plate being so large, I can't actually get it the camera close enough and unfortunately every time the screen on my ca uh, phone locks uh, it resets the zoom uh, so I, I wasn't able to do the same I, I tried uh, here's some here, here's some sequences of images of how that would have looked like without the zoom but I just didn't think it was worth it in the end uh, so here's some shots of the completed driver models instead and I'll talk about what I did to paint them as well. So uh, for the armor and for the tank cupola itself I use the same method as the hull of the tank. Marine blue washed with Leviadon blue and skeleton horde highlighted with Calgar blue followed by lupin grey. The gold areas were retributor armor followed by Liberator Gold, and then washed with Skeleton Horde. The metal areas were, were Lead Belcher, washed, and then uh, highlighted with Stormhost. And then I'd, I'd opted to paint the Stormbolters red to be in keeping with the retro theme of this, well, it's not exactly a retro theme, I, I've not used a retro paint scheme other than the red on the Stormbolters, but I felt a callback was necessary to this model's age, uh, other than the model itself being that old. Uh, yeah, so the lenses on the original driver are painted like the lens on the sensor array on the Vindicator itself. Uh, Avalanche Sunset highlighted with Ushapti Bone and then glazed with Flash Terrors Red. Uh, I did the same thing on Captain Cronus but I uh, washed it with Orc Flesh instead of Flash Terrors Red to make green lenses instead. Now as you can see, the lump and misshapen face of the original driver. I I don't think I've done too good of a job at painting it. Uh, I hope the the bus cut stubble somewhat elevates it to the point of tolerable, but I think the face on Captain Cronus came out pretty nice in the end. I was also unable to find a suitable way of photographing both the Hunter Killer Missile and the Dozer Blade separately. I'd chosen to leave it off during the hull photography, primarily so that it didn't obscure the front half of the tank. Um, the Hunter Killer Missile is exactly like the rest of the hull, so I won't go into that again. The dozer blade was base coated with lead belcher, highlighted with stormhost silver, and then I used a variety of different mixtures of Leviadon blue skeleton horde and Gulliman blue to add oil, grime and rust effects around the Edges. Most of these were then covered up by the stippling on of uh, Steel Legion Drab and Baneblade Brown. Uh, and then I also chose to use some weathering powders which I had uh, made from some soft pastels that I had lying around to make it look that, m that much more dirty. But uh, I, 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 I think you can see in these final finished shots that it looks pretty alright.
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to provide at least some entertainment in discussing my restoration process. Here's some elevated shots of the tank. Uh, I was then able to show the top half from the low camera angle I photographed it from. Um, yeah, so uh, this will be joining the rest of my army as a, well, as a Vindicator. Uh, other than the ninth Company badge here, and also on the back, there's nothing that would mark this out as distinctly a 40k model. Even Captain Cronus is in stylized Mark III armor, so I could use him as part of my heresy army if I wanted, or rather the tank with him on it. Yeah, that's a weird thing, actually. So, in the codices, they always mention how Captain Cronus, Spear of McCrag, it's a pre-heresy title which hasn't been used in millennia at the point by the time we're in 40k, but uh, <laughs> there has been no mention of the post of Spear of McCrag in any of the Horus Heresy novels, so... Uh, I guess that's just, you know, probably symptomatic of the fact that it's a made-up title for the 5th edition Marine Codex that Cronus first appeared in, but some consistency in background in the lore would have been nice, you know. Anyway, I guess some comparison shots of this and other more, model, more modern tanks are in order. So let's have a comparison between this Vindicator and its more modern counterparts. So I mean, the size difference is obvious. The old Mark I Rhino hull was considerably smaller, both in height and in length. Um, that's interesting. The difference between Aldov Guard and Marine Blue actually shows up a lot more prominently on camera than in real life. Um, Perhaps all I would have needed to prove my point back then was uh, smartphone footage. Anyway, um, so yeah. Uh, I, I really don't know what to say at this point. I might do a video just on the development of the Space Marine vehicle range uh, at some point in the future. Uh, no promises as to when. It definitely won't be the next video on the channel. But, uh, yeah. I do not have a current Vindicator model to compare it to, unfortunately. So, I, I can't do that. Um, yeah, I probably should think of an appropriate outro at some point, but uh, I don't know when I'll do that. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching the video, I guess. Uh, finish it off by putting the actual driver on here. Yeah, uh, this is a great model. I would say that it still stands up to the test of time. It, it, it's not aged badly, it's just a bit small compared to the current model range. But then again, so are normal Space Marines compared to their new Primaris Brethren. But I would say this would still look at home in a Space Marine army. I mean, it will. It, it'll be in mine, but, you know. Anyway, thank you for watching.